Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an ANOVA with a Fisher's Least Significant Difference Post-Hoc Test in SPSS. I have these fictitious data loaded in the data view here in SPSS. I have a treatment. I have three levels, individual CBT, group CBT, and treatment as usual. And I have 15 observations for each level of the independent variable treatment. And then I have two dependent variables, but I'm only going to be using one dependent variable at a time. So symptoms one and symptoms two. So I have these two variables to demonstrate two different facets of the Fisher's LSD. So let's assume that for these dependent variables, that this is a measurement of mental health distress with a higher score indicating more distress and a lower score indicating less distress. So first we want to check the assumptions for ANOVA. In this case we have an independent variable with three levels and we would need to have at least one with two or more levels. So we meet that assumption. We'll be running one dependent variable at a time here and the dependent variable uh, symptoms one and the dependent variable symptoms two, they're both measured at the continuous level. So we meet that assumption. We're gonna assume independence of observations. We'll check for outliers and for a normally distributed dependent variable. And then we'll check for homogeneity of variance as part of the ANOVA procedure. So first we'll take a look at outliers and test each dependent variable to see if it's normally distributed or not. We will go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, then Explore. And because I'll be using Symptoms 1 and Symptoms 2 in two separate analyses, I will move them both over to the Dependent List list box to check for outliers and normality. So under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram, and check off normality plots with tests, and then click OK. And of interest to me are the results from the Shapiro-Wilk test. And you can see for both symptoms 1 and symptoms 2, we have a non-statistically significant result. So we can assume that both of these dependent variables are normally distributed. We move down to the box plot for symptoms one. We can see that there's no values above the top whisker or below the bottom whisker, so we'll assume no outliers. And then move down for symptoms two. And look at the box plot, and again, we have no outliers here. Then I'm gonna to move to the ANOVA procedure. I'm gonna to go to Analyze and General Linear Model Univariate. And for this First analysis, I'm going to move symptoms one over to dependent variable and treatment over to fixed factor, which is the independent variable. Under plots, I'll put treatment on the horizontal axis and add that as a plot. Under options, I'm going to move treatment over to the display means for list box. Select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. And then under the post hoc option, I'm going to move treatment under post hoc test 4. And you can see we have Fisher's LSD here at the, in the top left. And it assumes homogeneity of variance. And normally, we would only select one post hoc test. But just for the purposes of demonstrating the difference, I'm also going to select the Tukey HSD test here. So LSD and Tukey checked off and click continue. The ANOVA is configured to run. I'll click OK. And we can see we have the three levels in the independent variable here and we have equal number of observations, 15, for each level of the independent variable. The mean and standard deviation and sample size provided in descriptive statistics. And then down here under Levine's test of quality of error variances, 
This is the test for homogeneity variance. We have a non-statistically significant result, 0 0.701. So we will assume that we have met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And therefore, it would be appropriate to interpret the LSD or uh, the HSD. Remember, again, we would not select both at the same time. But running either test individually would be acceptable based on this non-statistically significant Levine's test result. So then we move down to the test of between subjects effects. We can see we have a p-value here of 0 0.028. Now again for this demonstration I've run the uh, Tukey HSD and the LSD. But it's important to recognize here that although this is always of interest to us, we do not need a statistically significant result here as we do have here, 0 0.028. We do not need that to interpret the Tukey HSD, but we do need to have statistical significance here to interpret the LSD. So we do have it, so we can interpret either post hoc test in this case. So if I move down to multiple comparisons, we can see that the Tukey HSD and the LSD results are in the same table. The Tukey HSD is on top and LSD on the bottom here. And you see all the pairwise comparisons, individual CBT compared to group, individual compared to treatment as usual, and group compared to treatment as usual. And under Tukey HSD, only one of these comparisons is statistically significant, and that is individual CBT and treatment as usual with 0 0.03. If we look at LSD, we can see that there's statistical significance between the individual CBT and the treatment as usual levels, 0 0.011, and there's a statistically significant result between group CBT and treatment as usual. So the LSD test was not as conservative as the Tukey HSD. And this is one of the difficulties with the Fisher's LSD, is that even though it's quite powerful, it does not control well for type 1 error. In many situations, if you're looking at using the LSD or the Tukey HSD, the Tukey HSD is often the better choice because it better controls for type 1 error. If we move down to the chart, we can see the mean scores here for individual CBT and group CBT relatively low in comparison to the treatment as usual. So I'm going to conduct the same analysis again, uh, the NOVA, and keep everything the same except for I'm going to take out symptoms 1 and instead put in symptoms 2. OK. And you can see here we still have met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. But notice down in the test of between subjects effects, we have a non-statistically significant p-value for the independent variable treatment. So we cannot interpret the results of Fisher's LSD. So if I move down to the post hoc tests, we could see that the results of LSD are still displayed, even though we have that non-statistically significant result for the ANOVA. But again, we cannot interpret these. We can still interpret the Tukey HSD results, and we see that there are no statistically significant pairwise comparisons. Now this particular example stresses the importance of checking the results of the ANOVA before making interpretations and post hoc tests because under LSD with this variable symptoms 2 there is a statistically significant difference shown between individual CBT and treatment as usual. Now we know not to interpret that because of the ANOVA being non-statistically significant but this just underscores the importance of 
running the procedure properly and not advancing to the next stage without first clearing the previous stage. And then if we move down, we can see that for the Tukey HSD, there is this table for homogeneous subsets. And you can see that the means all fall in the same subset, all three means, which means we have no statistically significant differences between any of these levels. Information we knew from the multiple comparisons table, but it's just displayed in a different way here in the homogeneous subsets table. And then we can see from the plot, again, the individual CBT score and group CBT mean score fairly low and treatment as usual a bit higher. So the Fisher LSD post hoc test is a powerful test, but it may not be conservative enough for many situations. If you are going to use it, it can only be used with three levels of the independent variable. It cannot be used with more than three levels. And it can only be interpreted when you have a statistically significant result for the ANOVA. I hope you found this video on conducting an ANOVA with an LSD test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.